Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm very excited to talk about this topic, how to make an expanding donut chart in Tableau. And this comes from a blog by Playfair Data, so all credit to them for this solution. So what is this about? It's about a pie chart. Uh, looks simple, but when we hover over it, we can go down a level of detail. So this works great for hierarchical data. In this case, we have category and subcategory. So in this video, I would like to go through the blog posts and how this is done and explain also a bit why things work the way they do. And as a bit of an added value, I would also like to show how to use this type of chart in a dashboard or in a visualization. Now, this turned out to be a bit of a longer video than usual. It's about 20 minutes long. So please do feel free to look at the timestamps and hop around to the parts you're interested in. And now we're gonna start with our walkthrough tutorial. All right, so we're gonna start out by connecting to the data. So please connect to Sample Superstore or Superstore, depending on what you have on your Tableau desktop. We are gonna go to the Marks card and select from the drop-down menu, Pi. After that, we're going to pick a measure, in this case I'm choosing sales, and we're going to drag it to the size card. Okay, so for now we have one full pie that represents the sum of sales. And we want to break this down by product category. So we are going to go and pick from the product hierarchy category and drag it onto the color card. And there we go, we already have our pie chart. Now, in order to turn this pie chart into a donut chart, we want to go to the columns shelf and we want to type zero, which will automatically create a sum of zero aggregation, which has an axis. And after that, we want to duplicate this axis. So we want to have two axes, which will produce two identical pie charts. Now the next step is to turn our second pie chart, the one on the right, into a white circle. And we want to do that because our goal is to put this white circle on top of our pie and end up having a donut. So in order to do that, we want to go not on our first sum of sales, but on the second. So we're going to go to columns and click not on the first, but on the second, which is the one on the right, and we want to remove everything that's on the marks card. By doing this, as you see, our pie will turn into a simple circle. And at this point, we can just go ahead, uh, reduce the size and set the color onto white. Of course, if you have a background of a different color, please pick that color. And now for the very final bit, Let's go again on the sum of zero on the right and select dual axis. So just please make sure to do all the cosmetics work now because what we're about to do is to duplicate this sheet. Um, so if you don't remove all the lines, then it's a bit annoying because you will have to do it twice on both sheets. Okay, so now for our next step, what we want to do is to right click on the sheet and duplicate it. Unfortunately, you cannot see it well uh, from my screen. After duplicating it, I'm going to rename the second sheet into subcategory so that we distinguish them well. And I'm going to drag subcategory to detail. Now, the first pie or the category pie will be our internal one where the subcategory will be our external extended pie chart. Our next step will be to create a parameter. So let's go ahead and click on create parameter and name this parameter focus category. Choose as data type string, allowable values list, and let's add values from the field category. This will automatically fill in all the available fields for category. And let's go ahead and manually add reset. So now that we have created the parameter, we are gonna use it in a calculated field. So the first calculation we are going to create 
will be focus category, so our parameter equals category. And this calculation will return either true or false. Let's call this category filter and click on OK. And secondly, we are going to create a new calculated field that will concatenate category filter and category. So let's stop for a second to look at this calculation. What does this do and why do we need str? So str will convert category filter from a boolean, so from a true or false data type into a string. And this is necessary when we want to concatenate uh, two strings, so two pieces of text. So a category filter becomes a string and it will be a, either a T or an F, so either true or false, and it will concatenate with categories, so furniture, office supplies, and technology. We will see in a second why we are doing this. So now go, let's go ahead and call this category filter color and click on OK. Now our next step will be very quick, but also very important. We're still here on our subcategory pi, and we want to substitute category with our newly created category filter color. So we're going to color our pie chart by category filter color. And if you look now at the legend, you will not see the normal category uh, names or labels. You will see T plus the category name or F plus the category name, which is the result of the calculation we just created. Now, up next, we are going to deal with colors. So we want only the value visible in our parameter to be colored. The other two values should be white. So this is going to be used for hovering over a section of the pie chart and have the extension pop up. So in order to create this effect, we are going to go to our category filter color legend and only leave the values that have a T for true in front and leave them colored and make the other two white. Another small but visually important step is to go to the color marks card and add a white border to both the internal and the external pie. And this will help us clearly see each section of the pie. And now for our eighth step, we're going to create a label and we want to place this label in the center of the pie. This is not compulsory, but it's a nice addition. In order to do that, we're going to create a calculated field and give it a name such as sales by category label and then add a string within our calculation. In this case, I'm just going to copy part of the title and place it within inverted commas. Click on OK, and you can drag it to the second sum of sales in the category pie, right there on label, and make sure that the alignment for the text is centered. And it should look something like this. For this next step, we're going to create a couple of dynamic labels. And I would like to start off by showing you the end result. Uh, so that you can better understand why we are uh, writing the calculation the way that we are. So let's have a look at the category filter color. It is currently showing T technology, so technology is true. And it's saying technology is true because that's the value that is currently selected in the parameter. And now that we have, let me show you, we have these two calculations that we're about to create together called dynamic subcategory text label and dynamic subcategory sales labels. It's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> now that we have them on, because we have added both of them to labels, when I have technology selected, the labels are showing me the technology subcategories. If I switch to furniture, the labels will show me the furniture subcategories and the same for office supplies. And together with that, they're showing me the sales. So 
that's what we want to do with our calculation. Let's have a look at how to create it. All right, so let's create our first calculated field and call it dynamic subcategory text labels. And for this one, we are going to want to create an if then statement that goes something like this. If the color, so the category is what is currently selected by the parameter, then give me the corresponding subcategories. So if the parameter is selecting technology, give me the technology subcategories and so on. Otherwise, don't give me anything. And this is how we get Tableau to only show us labels for the selected category. So once we are done with this calculation, we're going to do something very similar for the sum of sales. So we can actually copy this calculation and create a new calculated field that is going to be called dynamic subcategory sales labels and use the same calculation and tell Tableau instead of giving me the subcategory label, this time give me the sum of sales. And we're gonna just say then sales and then wrap up the whole if then statement with the sum of aggregation. Okay, now that we have created both calculations, we are gonna use them both for the label and for the tooltip. Let's start out by adding both calculations to label. Here I realized that my sales calculation was discrete, so I converted it to continuous before dragging it on label. Alright, so let's customize our label to our liking. I just decided, of course, to put the label first and the sales later. So it will go something like uh, subcategory $200 or something like that. Um, you can, of course, customize the font, the size, and here I decided to play a bit with color. I tried a lighter black, like a gray, and decided it was too light. So <laughs> I went back in and I made it something like 75% black. All right, so this is it for the labeling let's do the same for our tooltip and actually we want to go from the all tooltip so uh, both for the internal part like the white circle and for the outside so wherever our um, our user clicks uh, they will have this tooltip and i'm going to add the same two fields dynamic subcategory text labels and sales labels uh, of course, customize it uh, to your liking. And the last thing not to forget is if you want the sales to uh, show the currency, so maybe you want it to show it in dollars, then go to the dynamic subcategory sales labels field on the data pane, right click on it, and select default property and of course you can choose whatever you like in this case I chose um, custom currency and set it to dollars so it looks a bit smoother now for our next step we're finally gonna start creating our dashboard so add a new dashboard and give it a name I wrote expanding bar chart of course I meant expanding donut chart let's select the floating option and float our subcategory donut into the view get rid of anything you don't need of the legends you don't need i'm going to keep these two for now and i'm going to hide the title and then make it as big as i like and that's the first step and the second step is to float the category donut on top of it now again hiding the title and getting rid of anything we don't want in the view. Now we are going to make the background of the category donut transparent. And then uh, this way we can see behind it. And now what we need to do is to align the two donuts. 
and this might take a bit of trial and error, it certainly did for me, so it's about resizing the two donuts so that the um, subcategory one can simply look like an extension of the first. Now another option you have, which is what I ended up doing here, is to make the subcategory donut tiled, so it's not floating and it's covering the entirety of the dashboard, but this only works if your whole dashboard is just this expanding donut. And now we're gonna order the donut slices. And we want to do this especially because we want the slices of the internal donut to correspond to the slices of the expanding donut. And as we see in the screen right now, this is not the case. And especially we see that the expanding donut chart only pops up on the upper left corner. So those are the fields we need to change. But let's start out with the internal pie. Um, yes, and let's start by ordering category. So we are going to right click sort and sort it by field and select sales. So we're going to order it by sum of sales and we can choose between ascending and descending. And for this case, I chose descending. And then we are going to order category filter color, which corresponds to category again by sum of sales. And if you pick descending on the first one, pick descending on the second as well. And then let's also sort subcategory. And we want to sort it again by field and select sum of sales. So we're going to sort it by sum of sales. However, nothing happens, you see. So the reason why nothing happens is because subcategory is the very last on the marks card. We want it to be right after color. And this way we see the subcategories are sorted in the descending order. And now let's go ahead and match the colors of the internal donut to those of the expanding one. I'm just going to go in one by one and change the colors for office supplies, furniture and technology. In this case, I'm keeping the colors exactly the same. But as was suggested also in the original blog, you can maybe tweak them a bit, make them a bit lighter or a bit darker to your liking. And now finally we can add a parameter action. And what the parameter action will allow us to do will be to hover on top of the donut and reveal the subcategory without having to click through the dropdown the way we've been doing so far. So in order to do that, we are going to go to the top bar and choose dashboard. And in the drop down, we're going to click on actions and we're going to add a change parameter action. Now let's call this parameter action expand donut. And we're going to use the category sheet. So the internal donut as a source sheet and choose to run our action on hover. For the target parameter, let's select focus category. For source field, we're going to choose category. And last but not least, let's select that clearing the selection will set the value to reset. And this last bit means that when we are not hovering or on anything, uh, Basically, we're only going to see the internal donut. All right, now this already works and uh, we're basically done with our expanding donut chart. The only thing I would like for all of us to do is to clean it up a little bit. So just add the finishing touches. And the first thing to do, in my opinion, is to go back to both sheets and change the tooltips a little bit. And so what I would like for us to do is to remove the option to include command buttons and also to remove the tooltips wherever they're not needed. So I would only like to have one tooltip per donut and for the tooltip to be meaningful and to the point. So this, of course, is up to you, your taste, uh, what your use case is. So yeah, I've done a bit of that. You can look at it on the screen or do your own thing, of course. 
And the other thing I did here was to change the default property of the sales field so that it would show the currency dollar. Um, yeah, that's something that you can always do. And yeah, that's it. We have our expanding donut chart and I hope this was useful for you guys. All right, so now we have learned how to create an expanding donut chart, but how can we use it in our day-to-day -day activity? How can we use it to create or to insert it in a dashboard? Now, I did not have an answer to this question when I first asked it myself, so I came up with a couple of ideas. Uh, the first one is this design where we have uh, some sort of KPI ban, but uh, with actual expanding donut charts and I have set them so that uh, they if we go and uh, hover over the subcategory we actually filter the table below um, I think this is a nice design I mean it looks nice to my eye to have these uh, three donuts I don't think it's a great idea it's not I don't think it's necessarily functional in the sense that it's quite heavy uh, there's a lot of filter actions and of course we have our uh, parameter action already so uh, it might not be the best idea for all use cases. So I also thought of uh, inserting just one expanding donut chart within a dashboard. I think this is more doable and yeah here I have a couple of examples. In this case I put it at the bottom and again I'm using it to filter the whole dashboard and if I click on this button here I have another example where I put it in the top left so I do think this is the best way to use an expanded donut chart as in to use one so as not to make the dashboard too heavy and you can insert it wherever you want and if you want to you can use it to uh, filter the rest of the dashboard. Now, thank you for watching this very long video. Thank you for following along and I hope you enjoyed it. Leave any comments, any suggestions, any observation you have down in the comments below and I'll see you next time.